In this video, we are talking about turkey waddle necks. That's right, that waddly stuff that forms underneath our chin that we just don't like at all. But in this work with me video, I'm gonna be talking about it from a different point of view. I'm gonna be talking about it from the point of view of me just watching 10 different turkey waddle videos first and what I think actually works. So stay tuned, that's coming up next. Welcome back, Christine Beyer here, licensed esthetician for 21 years. And I've worked on lots of necks. I have worked on my own neck many, many times and been frustrated with it. So you are in the right place. This is the official neck channel. We're gonna be working our necks while I talk. So grab your device. This can be microcurrent. This can be ultrasound. And we're gonna work our neck in a way that avoids the thyroid and still gets a nice lift. So grab your device and let's get to work. So you guys, I got my hair cut uh, on Friday and a little bit of highlights put in and she did it perfectly and I just tried to sort of freshen up <laughs> and I completely destroyed it. Let's just tack it on back. <laughs> so the, the videos I saw on yoga, I, I'm, I'm okay with them. They, they look all right. Like one gal was doing this tiny little this. Now, if you have a really thin gazelle-like neck and you're just starting to see signs, lines, signs of aging in that area, doing this, I guess it can help a little. I mean, it's increasing circulation and maybe lightly helping to break up some fascia that's some adhesion stuff that starts to happen in this area. But really, if you have a voluminous neck and waddle it's just not going to do very much so you have to look at the person who is doing the exercises if their neck looks great but it's this big long thin gazelle neck it ain't going to work for you if you get a neck like fine just not going to work i'm sorry i've tried what i like to do is just make sure that the biggest muscles are released and the muscles that contract when we look down because if we don't release those muscles, we get sort of a lymph traffic jam, and an already sort of can, uh, already sort of heavier area can look even more bloated if there's lymph collected in the area. And if you don't know what lymph is, it is the body's garbage disposal system, and it just sort of moves in waves, and it moves when we move. It doesn't have a heart to beat it through. So it only moves when we move. So it tends to really accumulate in my clients through here and on myself. So let's just start releasing that area. And you don't need any tools for this, just your hands. Now, if you have long nails, you're gonna have to turn it to the side and you might have to use your knuckles or something. So we're, we're gonna release the sternocleidomastoid, the SCM on both sides. And if you don't know what that is, just turn your head to the side and this big ropey muscle that pops out on both sides, that is your SCM. And so I just start, and I'm basically just, just pinching, and you see I have no nails, occupational hazard for me, I can't have nails. <laughs> because I put some bronzer on, I feel like I look like a Oompa Loompa. Don't know why, I don't think I like that bronzer. So we are just sort of pinching and walking up and down, walking up and down. I went to an advanced facial contouring massage. It was called Finding Fascia by Jane Mann. Highly recommend if you're an esthetician. And Jane says she's just trying to get space. Like she was, she was like pulling out like that. That's, that's a little intense for first timers. So let's just work on walking up and down this big ropey thing. And you can get right up under the ear. Lots of congestion happens through there. And you'll see just doing a little sort of pinch, almost a little twist. Man, that feels good. Oh. It can feel tender too, if you've never released this. This gets super shortened when we look at our devices and look down. 
Okay, so now if you look, you're gonna see a little bit of redness. That's good, it means we've got some blood supply going that we're gonna to start to drain. My neck looks better already. <laughs> Anyway, uh, there was something I saw in another video, and I think she was like facial yoga expert. I, I kind of liked it because it made sense to me. It's not going to release anything, but she ties a towel around her head to like make like a cushion support so that the muscles can't wrinkle. <laughs> and she had a long thin neck, and I just thought that was funny. I was like, well, that's that's kind of interesting that's that could work so she puts it there so that when she looks down the muscles don't wrinkle it's not going to keep your your SCMs from contracting but it may hold that in place so that when you look down the muscles still up you know sort of like when you were in your 20s <laughs> I thought that was interesting okay so now that we've got that released go ahead and apply a little bit of your conductive gel we're gonna use this as a substitute massage oil Oh, I'm just gonna put this here. I like to have a little slip and glide for this and then put the rest of it down. Okay, and so I just hold my hands like up underneath my ears and then I, I take my thumbs and I ride the jawbone, that mandibular, just ride it. Lots of stuff gets stuck in this area. And this is all I'm doing is just writing this so our neck muscles are in a cantilever they like oppose each other so they will pull down this part will pull down and some facial expressions that we make uh, especially this the downward turn smile so I like to go in here like I'll work this area on clients where I release this but I also release up underneath here you know this feels good too you can just use your fingers don't don't be like poking just just sort of go deeper as your anatomy allows just go deeper as it starts to soften some people are really hard through here but you know I've got a softer shorter neck so mine starts to give pretty quickly all right, and then you can do a little draining, a lot of lymph nodes through here, a little draining. And lymph is pretty superficial, but it can get trapped really well up underneath there. So I don't know if you're seeing this, but that has released quite a bit of lymph and it's starting to drain. You wanna drink some water. Drinking a glass of water before this treatment wouldn't be a bad idea. And then some after, you know, take a walk, get everything draining. Posture is so important too. Uh, another lady was talking about posture. 100% posture is so important. I've talked about that in past videos. They were also talking about creams and such, and creams, absolutely, you know, if you improve, improve the quality of the skin, that it's gonna look better, but there's a lot of muscles that start to sag past 40 in this area that no cream can really do anything with. So that's when I turn to LED, I turn to microcurrent, and I start to massage the structure underneath. And with LED, I start to activate that ATP or the powerhouse of those cells and get everything moving. And if you think about, that's essentially what every cream does, is it tries to accelerate collagen and elastin production. So if we can give it a hand, you know, use the best creams and remove trapped toxins and lymph and sweep those away and use then that's going to improve our results what else oh i was watching one by the doctors where there was this gal and she's like i'm 62 or 61. she's like freaking amazing her, she looked great except she was saying that her neck she didn't like her neck she's like i feel like my neck gives away my age well yeah maybe but like the rest of her face looked rocking and so she took care of herself she works out she eats fairly well i'm just going to use the curve while i talk to y'all so i'm going to turn on uh, mode three this is a new device from germany man i love this i love this thing okay i'm on i'm on mode three level three yeah, so they recommended to her facial exercises, and she had a shorter neck, but you know she wasn't heavy. But that doesn't really have anything to do with it because the structural changes that happen, we lose 
fat padding. We get fat migrations. The fat that was up here is like underneath our chin. We lose bone. If you look at your jaw, your mandibular, from when you were 20 to now, I'm sure 20s is like this and then 50s is like this. So there's a lot going on underneath the surface. And so on this doctor's episode, what did they say? They, they uh, She was like, I'm so tired of creams. I've tried every cream on the planet. And of course the doctor's talking to her, the one they had come on. I thought for sure they were gonna say radio frequency or something. Uh, it's just, I was just like, what? And at the end, she talked about this neck cream and showed a before and after of, you know, th three months post. And I'm like, sure. I mean, if you look at the lady before, she's probably in her 70s, maybe older. And she, it looks like she never did anything for that area. And it's actually a little bit smaller. So there's a little bit of trickery going on with that video, I think. It look, looks like it to me. Oh. I'm such a bitch. <laughs> I've just been doing this for too long. Now look, I have hypothyroid, so I can actually go right here. But if you have any thyroid issues, it's best to go up on the side, underneath the chin. And this is the way I usually work on my clients. And then down the side, because that thyroid's right here. So, but if you have no thy thyroid issues, you could do it just a little, you know, just sort of wake up that skin, wake it up. I, I wouldn't plant the thing there for the whole time, but just a, just a whiff, just a dusting. But you really should ask your doctor about that first, but they're gonna say no, because that's what they always say. <laughs> but just know that this does a pretty nice job. And if you use LED, you can use LED in the area. I wouldn't put it flat against. I normally say put it flat against, but you can hold it a little bit further away and still get this area in you. That seems safer to me than putting it flat against the skin in that area. And LED gets really nice results with crepey, crepey turkey wattle. So if you just have the beginnings of crepiness there, LED is fantastic for it. So this device is actually 625 LED. It's biomechanical vibration, ultrasound at 300 megahertz, and radio frequency. So this is for face and body. We brought this on last month, Labor Day weekend. It's been a smash hit. So if you think about the Wadley area, and I didn't hear people talk about this that much, but if you think about that platysma, it's it's a muscle that starts about right here, and that's why I talk about how it can make your sides of the corners of the mouth more downturned, because it, it, it plays a role in that. So it starts here, it goes all the way down until the clavicle area. So, and it's like a sheath, it's a flat muscle, right? And so as we lose bone and fat in our faces, this will sort of cave in because the scaffolding it had once to hold all that in place is just melting away through the decades. So we, we want to work with our anatomy and understand what's going on underneath there. And there was a doctor that did filler along the jawline and I'm not crazy about that idea because you know filler can migrate and they've done MRIs and filler really doesn't disappear like we thought it does it it, it will migrate to somewhere else and in the class I took Jane was talking about how you know you got about four or five tries with filler before you start to look weird and you can do the same amount in the same place and it's gonna start to look strange. And I know with Botox, I, I've had filler, God, it's been 2016, and I said never again. <laughs> uh, I'll stick with my Korean facial filler mask and facial filling products, the Sculpla, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with those. But yeah, it starts to look weird because 
some sticks around, it moves around, it sticks around, and you start to look kind of doughy and strange. And we've seen this on Nicole Kidman. We've seen this on Madonna. We've seen it. We've seen it on Courtney Cox. And so you can have it dissolved, but it, will it get it all out? And the more we were talking about it, the more turned off to filler I got. <laughs> And I'm like, well, maybe, you know, once or twice, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, ask me in 10 years, but gross. I'm like, just gross. <laughs> I just, and I do have some clients that like are regular filler getters. And yeah, you know, some of them are starting to look just a little balloon faced. So that being said, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that idea of putting in filler to replace what we've lost. I think what I like better is a combination of making the skin as healthy as possible and subtracting. So like with fibroblast or a CO2 laser or something that actually shrinks tissue. And if it's done right, like if they go up behind the ear, they get a big purchase of skin in front of the ear, if they get this whole area, you can get a nice lift. Also remember, going back to the anatomy and the fat that gets deposited there, you may need some fat dissolving. So you may need some Kybella. And Kybella, Kybella, what is the name of that acid? It's an acid that's naturally occurring in our digestive tract, but it burns fat. And so it's something you have done what, once a month, two, three, four, five times. I had it done once, once again, around the same time I was doing the filler and the craziness. And I didn't like the results because I didn't get any, I didn't get any retraction. And there was a dermatologist taught, oh no, he's a plastic surgeon. He was, the same guy that was talking about putting filler, he talked about uh, getting Kybella. And that's great if you have just a little bit of sort of hereditary fat pocket right here. But I would think for general aging of a shorter neck, nah. I don't, I think you'll be underwhelmed. And, and I, I did all sorts of good stuff for my skin, but I, I still had, it didn't get retraction. And I found fibroblast years later, but I had lost so much bone and fat. I just had a lot of fat accumulation. So uh, it, it worked, it did work, and it was what I was happiest with. And then there's the facelift, right? So if you've gone through all this stuff and you're just tired of it and you've got a lot of bone loss and you've got a lot of fat deposits underneath there, you know, you can make the skin look excellent, but can you lift it? And it's usually, it's a combination of excess platysma, you've just got excess structure underneath the skin. You've got excess fat, excess platysma, and it's all sort of coming down and in. And in that case, you you may be happy with fibroblasts, you may be happy with high foo, radio frequency, all those heating treatments, but I'm thinking I would get a consult for neck lift because that's tough then. You guys have seen my journey, you know it's tough. <laughs> I feel like I'm all over the place in this video, but I think it's like we need to consider the anatomy. We need to consider the tools we have. I think if you're just starting to see bits of excess wattle, I think microcurrent is fantastic. LED is fantastic. These devices that will give us plumpness back to the skin will help retain, sort of fill out what's missing to a certain degree and I think that's why microcurrent has been so tremendously popular because not only does it give you that microcurrent glow it actually builds up muscle tissue it's the only modality that can build up muscle tissue and fill back so let's do a little bit of microcurrent okay so my face is nice and warmed up from that vibrational massage and that ultrasound now, if you're gonna do microcurrent and another modality, always do microcurrent last because you wanna leave those muscles taut and retrained and up there. You don't wanna do anything else to sort of re-release them afterwards, if that makes sense. So I am just using, I like this, especially on the neck because 
it has these revolving frequencies, sort of randomized frequencies. I'm just using my little battery packs. So don't have to plug it into the wall. Yeah, and I have a, I have a specific way that I do microcurrent on my own neck. I always do only lateral moves and I'm going way too fast just so you know but I like to do only lateral moves because I find moves like this up and down make my neck look fatter <laughs> and that was interesting too I did some of those exercises on on the facial yoga and I looked at my neck and I'm like my neck looks fatter <laughs> it just looked fuller which makes sense I mean I did those without releasing any lymph so really, that's, that's the order. We wanna go in, warm up the tissue, relax the tissue, release overly tight muscles. And then we go up and shore up muscles. You know, this platysma loses its, loses some strength as we get older. So yeah, release work, warm up tissue, release. So you could do LED some release work with a gua sha tool. I mean, I really love the Anma. So I'll go in here. Well, we did this with our hands. I mean, I think the Anma's faster, but we just did this with our fingers before we started. Okay, so yes, it's release work and then you know, radio frequency, whatever sort of shrinking that you want to use haifu whatever you have at home and then you would always end with microcurrent like i said i'm doing this on the sides because that platysma irons itself out better on my anatomy than going up and down if i go up and down my neck looks fuller and i just don't want that so there's this side one I'm trying to remember what other people said, what I agreed with and what I didn't. But just know, you know, look at the person that you're working on, or sorry, that is working in the video. And if they have this long gazelle neck, they're basically doing moves that mostly help for long gazelle necks. <laughs> so I, I try to teach methods that are going to work on any neck. You know, I've, I've, worked on so many different neck types over the years. And when they all have their issues, right? They all have their issues of how, how they age. All right, so it feels pretty good. It feels like it's drained and it looks pretty taut. So anyway, I hope that Understanding the anatomy helps you understand what you need. Know that you can always go to a plastic surgeon and have an evaluation. Heavier necks are harder to correct than long gazelle necks, in my opinion. And yeah, we just have to understand our anatomy. And then facial creams that are more than just hydrating, you know, neck creams that are more than just hydrating, they have to have growth factors, peptides, something that's really uh, stem cells. I mean, stem cell releasing molecules like anything from neogenesis is just an amazing neck treatment. What else? Some necks need a bit of exfoliation. Some necks need retinol. I don't always suggest Retin-A for the neck because it tends to be very drying and can make your neck look worse, but that's always something that you gotta try to know if it's right for you. Yeah, LED, microcurrent, radio frequency, all sorts of things we can try before we go under the knife that can help a neck look much better. So I hope this video helped and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye now.